for complete setup, preventive maintenance, and safe operating instructions. Please read the operator's manuals that have been enclosed with this tool package. The Huck Model 256 Neudraulic Installation Tool is designed for high-speed product applications and is able to install up to 20 fasteners per minute. The tool provides optimum stroke for one-cycle installations and features a concentric inline pull piston and new front gland design, allowing for easy piston removal. Maintenance is quick and easy. To begin with, you'll need to disassemble the nose piece. Starting with the retaining nut, remove the nose assembly, then the swage anvil, and unthread the collet. Insert the reservoir fill tool, and note that there's a short side and a long side. The long side will be used to pull the reservoir forward. Thread it in until it bottoms out. Lock the tool forward. Next, remove the head from the handle and cylinder to empty the oil. First, remove the four screws from the bottom side of the head. Pull the head from the handle and remove the glands. Also, remove the gland from the handle and set aside. This gland will be disassembled later. Empty the oil inside and wipe the handle clean. Next, put air on the cylinder and cycle the piston all the way up. This is done so you can remove the screw that holds the intensifier piston in the handle. Plug in the air. Be sure to hold a towel over the top of the head handle for safety. Then, cycle the piston all the way to the top position. Now that the piston is completely extended, you may remove the screw with an Allen wrench. You'll need to keep the trigger depressed so the piston doesn't retract into the tool. Once the screw is removed, release the trigger to let the piston down. You'll notice the piston has remained at the top position for future removal. Now it's time to unplug the air. You won't need it for the rest of the disassembly process. The next step is to remove the handle from the base of the tool. First, take off the safety shield by removing the Allen screws on each side of the handle. Next, take off the cross arm. Do this by removing the cross arm screw with an Allen wrench. Slide the cross arm off the wire. Remove the distributor valve. Then turn the tool upside down to remove the interior spring. Now you're ready for disassembly of the handle and the cylinder. To begin, turn the tool upside down and secure it in the vise. Remove the bottom cap. To do so, simply remove the four Allen screws. Now remove the muffler end cap, rubber gasket, muffler, and the spacer O-ring which holds the muffler in place. Tap the back plate with a brass hammer to make sure it's down all the way. This will allow easy removal of the spiral lock ring. At this point, place the screws from the back cap into the cylinder head. Using two screwdrivers, pry up the cylinder head. Then take the piston out using vice grips. Now you're ready to remove the gland using a 1 and 3 8 inch socket wrench with an extension. The gland is highly torqued, so be sure to use a long enough wrench to break it loose. Once the gland is loose, remove it by hand. Take off the cylinder, set it aside. 
use the threaded 1732nd 20 bolt and thread it in to pull out the gland. Now lift the handle out of the vise and use a long rod to tap out the intensifier gland. Next, drain the oil from the head by releasing the reservoir fill tool and taking the tool off. Next, remove the screws from the base of the head and remove all balls and springs. Remove the pintail deflector. Now it's time to remove the reservoir housing using an Allen wrench. This consists of two springs. Using needle nose pliers, pull out the reservoir tube. Remove the spacer and O ring. Next, put the head in the vise. Remove the back cap with an inch and three quarter socket and ratchet. Insert the spacer and bullet. Then using a brass hammer, tap the bullet in all the way to remove the piston assembly. You may need to use a rod to tap the piston the rest of the way out. Remove the front and rear glands. Replace all seals. Now it's time to inspect the air cylinder. First, check for score marks inside the cylinder. Check the piston rod inspecting it for score marks and any surface scratches. Then check both sides of the piston front and back for score marks and scratches. Then check the rear bore end head for any score marks. Next it's time to reassemble the piston. Make sure all O-rings and seals have been replaced. Install the rear gland onto the pull piston with the tapered end facing forward. Thread on the bullet. Put on the front gland. The piston is now assembled. You'll need a light coating of lubricant on all smooth surfaces, including each one of the O-ring seals. Move the gland through the tool. Gently tap the assembly in. Remove it from the vise and lightly tap it along an edge so it's in far enough to install the retaining nut. 
Then, take the rear retaining nut and set it on, twisting in place. This will push and seat everything inside into place. Put the assembly back in the vise and tighten with a 1 and 3 quarter inch socket and ratchet. Next, install the reservoir quad ring, sleeve, reservoir piston, two springs and reservoir housing and tighten with an Allen wrench. Now we'll insert the plugs needed to prepare the head for bleeding. The first plug goes into the back side. Insert, then tighten with a screwdriver. The next plug will be inserted into the front check valve port. We'll insert the retaining sleeve which retains the check valve seat. Then we'll put the plug in that retains the retaining check valve sleeve and tighten with a screwdriver. These plugs will be removed later during the bleeding procedure. The head is now ready to be reassembled onto the tool and to be bled. Next will be the assembly of the tool's handle. Start by placing the handle in the vise. Using the locating pin and the locating hole, attach the cylinder. Attach the upper part of the gland to the lower part, turning to secure into place. Using a torque wrench, tighten the gland down into the cylinder. Refer to the manual for torque value. Now, insert the pre-lubricated piston into the cylinder. Using both hands, gently push down on the piston to lock into place. Place the back cap on top and gently hammer into place. Insert the spiral locks ring and make sure it's seated properly. This holds the entire bottom section of the tool together. Set the small O-ring on top of the cylinder assembly. Place the muffler on top. Next, place the back cap with the rubber gasket. Insert the four screws. And rotate the cap so that it's properly lined up. Using an Allen wrench, tighten up each screw. Now remove the cylinder assembly from the vise. To reassemble the air system, insert the spring into the hole. Insert the air valve into the hole. Attach the cross arm to the trigger cable. And insert the cross arm screw into the handle. Test the cross arm function to make sure it's working correctly. Attach the safety shield. Using an Allen wrench, secure with screws, making sure both are tight. It's time to check the air system to ensure there are no leaks. Attach the air supply hose. Listen and feel around the tool for any air escaping. Pressing the trigger, cycle the tool once or twice. Insert the intensifier piston and the corresponding screw. Tighten with an Allen wrench. Cycle the tool so that the intensifier piston is in the up position. Using the Allen wrench, slowly and gently wiggle it back and forth to firmly compress the O-rings into the handle. Then tighten it up. 
Again, cycle the tool once or twice. Retighten as before. Note how the piston moves up and down as you cycle the tool. Now, remove the air supply from the tool. To attach the head assembly to the tool, place the large adapter gland at the front of the tool and gently push it in place. Then, place the small gland in the rear of the tool. Set the head assembly aside. Fill the oil reservoir three quarters full. Be careful not to overfill. Finally, take the head assembly and place it on top, gently rocking it into place. Insert all four screws to anchor it on. Tighten with an Allen wrench. Note, all torque specifications are listed in the manual. In preparation to bleed the tool, insert the fill tool rod into the reservoir housing and spin it until you feel it bottom in the threaded hole. Thread the retaining nut onto the tool. Thread the stall nut into the tool until it bottoms out. Lay the tool down flat. Insert the tip of the oil bottle into the reservoir and twist it on until it fits snugly. Plug the regulator into the air supply and set it for 45 to 50 pounds. Attach the air supply and regulator assembly to the tool. Next, we'll cycle the tool in order to get the air out of the oil system. Note that the piston moves in and out. This helps extract any air trapped in the seals. Adjust the retaining nut out to the stall nut, making sure the piston is all the way forward and locked in position. Now cycle until you don't see any more air coming out, as much as 20 to 30 times. Pump by hand to make sure there's no air stuck in the reservoir. Next, lock the reservoir and cycle the tool a few more times to ensure all the air has been worked out. With the air supply still attached to the tool, remove the fill bottle. Drop the large ball into the hole. Then, attach the long guide to the light spring and drop both into the hole. Next, insert the hollow cap. Wipe clean with a soft cloth. Unscrew the front plug. Take the guide and the smaller of the two balls and drop them down inside of the hole. Now reinsert the plug and using a large screwdriver, screw it in. Using a small Allen wrench, pop the set screw loose to relieve the extra oil pressure that may have built up. Once the excess oil is drained, tighten up the set screw. Wipe the surfaces clean. If the retaining nut is still loose, you'll know everything is still in the right place. Set the tool right side up. If you can see all the springs, there isn't enough oil in the tool. Lock the reservoir forward. Open up the rear reservoir and fill it with oil. No need to hook the bottle into the hole. Simply run the oil down the side of the reservoir to fill, checking for air pockets.
Next, cycle the tool with everything locked together. Compress with high pressure until the reservoir feels solid and firm. If everything is in place, you should be able to break apart the retaining nut and stall nut. This means that the air piston is all the way down, the hydraulic piston is all the way forward, and all valves sealed 100%. Nothing is shifting around. Finally, you should top off the reservoir with oil before operation. Remove the fill tool. Remove the stall nut. And cycle the piston forward and back a few times. Install the pintail deflector. Disconnect the pressure gauge. First unplug the air supply from the tool. Then unplug the gauge and set it aside. Plug the air line directly into the tool. To attach the nose assembly, first remove the retaining nut. Then screw the collet assembly directly into place. Tighten up with a wrench. Slide the anvil over the nose assembly, then reapply the retaining nut. Now you're ready to install a fastener. Be sure to use a fastener with the right amount of washers to properly simulate the material to be fastened. Insert the fastener into the nose assembly. Pull the trigger. The pin will break and the fastener should fall out. You're now ready to use the 256 tool for fastener installation. Arconic Fastening Systems. Innovation Engineered.